So a few months ago, I reviewed the Gigabyte RTX 4070, and in that video, I said I felt the RTX 4070 was getting a lot of undeserved hate because of the price, when in actuality, it was actually a really decent graphics card, providing you with a lot of performance in almost any task. But today, we're taking a look at its bigger brother, the RTX 4070 Ti Super, to see if this is the 4070 that you should actually go and buy. Let's take a look. So the RTX 4070 Ti Super has 16 gigabytes of GDDR6X VRAM, 8,448 CUDA cores. It has a core clock of 2,655 megahertz, which is slightly higher than the reference card that sits at 2,610. In terms of design, it actually looks very similar to the RTX 4070 that I tested. And I actually really like this design as it isn't too flashy and it also doesn't have a ton of RGB, but you still have the Gigabyte logo on the side. And then of course the rings around the fan. So even though it is subtle, it is still there if you want some RGB in your setup. The backplate for me looks really great and it also has this gap to help air flow through. Then if you take a look at the sides, you'll also see your OC and silent switch to switch between those two modes. And next to that, you'll also find your power pin, which is once again, one of those splitter cables from Nvidia. And to power it, they recommend at least 750 watt power supply. So if you don't have at least 750 watts, I recommend grabbing a 750 watt or higher power supply to make sure that you're getting the most performance out of your setup. Then in terms of connections, you do have three display ports and one HDMI port, which once again is fairly important, especially if you wanna connect this to multiple displays. And if you have multiple displays that just use HDMI connections, then it might be time to either upgrade to a display that has a display port or just getting a cable that works between your graphics card and your monitor. The RTX 4070 Ti Super comes equipped with 4th gen tensor cores and 3rd gen ray tracing cores to help give you the best performance in game. And then if you are a streamer, broadcaster, or just do a lot of video calls, it also has AV1 encoding, thanks to the 8th gen NVENC encoder, which is 40% more efficient than H.264, meaning that your streams will look just as good as the games you are playing with this graphics card. It also has DLSS 3.5, which massively helps improve performance in game while still providing you with great ray tracing quality. And how it's done is AI generates up to seven out of eight pixels to provide you with four times better image quality while increasing full ray tracing performance in your games. Now the system I have here is an i7-14700K with 32 gigabytes of RAM. And then of course the RTX 4070 Ti Super. And I've used this setup for a few days now to edit videos, photos, and do some design work and of course, play some games. Now I did play a variety of different games while testing out this GPU from CS2, Cyberpunk 2077, Guardians of Galaxy, and so many more titles to see how it performs. And honestly, it blew me away. In CS2 at 4K with all of the settings set to ultra, I was able to stay in the high 400 frames per second 90% of the time with the occasional dip and spike here and there. In Apex Legends with everything set to ultra once again, I stayed at a locked 144 Hz, even when dropping. But here are some other benchmarks so you can see how it actually performed in some other titles as well. From the results shown, I think it's really easy to say that the RTX 4070 Ti Super is amazing for games. And even at 4K with everything set to max, I still had an amazing time with all of the games that I played. 
In all of the titles that I tested, the frame rates are more than acceptable. And of course, if you have a game that is more demanding, then you can always turn down the graphics settings. And if you have a Quad HD or a 1080p monitor, this GPU will be more than enough for you. Now for me and most other people, we probably don't just use our graphics cards for gaming mainly. And for me as a content creator, I also edit photos, videos, do some design work and even some 3D printing. So it needs to be able to do all of that good as well. In terms of all of the above, it performed extremely well. I was able to edit photos and videos without any problems, even 4K video with a few different transitions and a few different effects on top. It handled it perfectly. But of course, I just need to add that if you're editing a lot of 4K video with a lot of effects and a lot of things added on top, you could still potentially strain this GPU. So don't think that this is a sort of buy all, be all type graphics card that's just gonna handle all of your 4K video without any sort of problems. But yes, if you are a general sort of content creator, video editor, and you do slightly intense video editing, this should be more than enough. And then of course you also have your NVENC encoder, which was amazing back when it launched a few years ago. But now of course you have AV1 encoding, which is less demanding than H.264, which means that if you're looking for a graphics card to start streaming or broadcasting or do a lot of video calls with, then this is gonna be a really great choice for you. Now I did run a couple of test streams with a bunch of different titles, and in all of the tests, it ran a general stream extremely well. And even in more demanding titles, I didn't see any drop frames, which makes sense because the stream is handled by the NVENC chip while the GPU does the rest of the heavy lifting in your games. NVIDIA also made a point to mention all of the AI capabilities of these graphics cards, with the most interesting for me probably being the in-game AI, which allows you to sort of interact with in-game characters in a more natural way. But if you wanna see more of the AI capabilities that these graphics cards have, I would highly suggest going and watching that live stream from NVIDIA where they announce these cards. And then of course, going on YouTube and maybe finding different channels who mainly focus on AI capabilities of these graphics cards. Now overall, is the RTX 4070 Ti Super a great graphics card? Yes, it is. Should you actually go out and buy one? Well, that is mainly dependent on you and what other reviewers are actually saying about these graphics cards. My channel isn't focused on hardcore reviews. I'm not comparing this graphics card to a bunch of different other ones out there. I'm not comparing the price to performance ratio of this graphics card. And my channel is mainly focused on taking a look at a product for what it is. Let's say you had no other choice and you had to buy the RTX 4070 Ti Super. How is it gonna perform? Is it gonna be good? And will you be able to do everything that you should be able to do with this graphics card? And in that aspect, this graphics card is amazing. Is it the best price to performance graphics card out there? Maybe not. But if you are someone like me and you play games, you edit videos, you edit photos, whatever the case may be, or you're just looking for a graphics card that is able to game at 4K, 2K or 1080p at high frame rates, then this is gonna be a really good choice for you. So if you are looking for a graphics card that can do all of that, go ahead and buy one. If you're looking for a graphics card that will give you the best bang for your buck or has the best price to performance ratio, then I would highly suggest checking out other reviews to see how it compares to different graphics cards on the market today and how much value you are actually getting with this graphics card. But then, until next time, cheers.